Hello everybody, I think you will love this video because I am presenting the true origins of the swastika. Before I get to what I discovered, let's see what is officially accepted. This website, obviously relating to the Holocaust, which may or may not have occurred as we are told, it's irrelevant to bring up this controversial topic, but here's what it says. The origins of the swastika. The word swastika comes from the Sanskrit. Oh, Sanskrit. Swastika, which means good fortune or well-being. The motif, a hooked cross, appears to have first been used in Eurasia as early as 7,000 years ago, perhaps representing the movement of the sun through the sky. To this day, it is a sacred symbol in Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Odinism. It is a common sight on temples or houses in India or Indonesia. Swastikas also have an ancient history in Europe, appearing on artifacts from pre-Christian European cultures. Alright, alright, this is a clear description of the origins. Let's try a different place. This place is ancientorigins.net. Reconstructing the story of humanity's past, huh? <laughs> alright, what does this say? This swastika is a symbol that was used in the 20th of century by one of the most hated men that ever lived okay this is not how you want to start an article which is on a website called ancient origin just saying let's see the next part spiritual beginnings for the swastika for the hindus and buddhists in india and other asian countries the swastika was an important symbol for many thousands of years and to this day the symbol can still be seen in abundance on temples buses taxis and on the cover of books it was also used in ancient greece and rome and can be found in the remains of the ancient city of troy which existed 4000 years ago the ancient druids and the celts also used the symbol reflected in many artifacts that have been discovered. It was used by the Nordic tribes, and even early Christians used the swastika as one of their symbols, including the Teutonic Knights, a German medieval military order, which became a purely religious Catholic order. But why is this symbol so important? Why did Adolf Hitler decide to use it? Again, why you gotta go to Adolf Hitler if you're talking about the spiritual beginnings, I'm actually liking this Holocaust origin story more. Positive days of the swastika. The word swastika is a Sanskrit word, meaning it is well-being, good existence, and good luck. However, it is also known by different names in different countries like Wan in China, Manji in Japan, Filfot in England, Hocken Cruz in Germany and Tetraskelion or Tetragamadion in Greece. In 1979, a Sanskrit scholar P. R. Sarkar said that the deeper meaning of the word is permanent victory. All right, I love this bullshit. Let's go to Ancient Asia by Nikolai Densushanu. And let's not forget, he wrote this book prior to 1913 when it was published. He died in 1911. He spent like 40 years writing this book. This chapter 2, part 2, is titled Additional Notes. So this he must have gathered not when he originally wrote chapter 2, but much later on. On page 175 of the PDF listed online, there's a chapter dedicated to, I mean, a paragraph dedicated to explaining what the swastika symbol is all about. I have translated part two. I am trying to find the time to put together a video, but for now, let's see what it says on page 175.
of the book. Here we go. A distinct importance for the ethnic character of the primitive European civilization is the comparative study of the industrial ornamentation of the ceramics of objects of bronze and even on the ancient Mycenaic architecture. Different motifs of these ornamentations, starting with the edges of the eastern side of Asia Minor all the way to the Britannic Islands, present us the same unity of spirit, the same common origin. Now, just so you know, chapter 2, part 2 speaks a lot about the pottery and um, weapons and instruments used by the Stone Age and Bronze Age Neolithic cultures. These cultures, I will get to, to what they are in just a second, but uh, they're known as Turdas Vinca today by science. All right, so same common origin. Okay, let's continue. The entire system of these ornamentations is Palasque, and this style of decorations we find even today represented almost in its entire form in homewares on the fabrics and seams used in particular of the Romanian people. Now keep in mind, this book, the man died in 1911. So up to 1911, this was very common. These symbols or ornamentations, as he calls them, or decorations or whatever. And then the source, which is in red, was the book. It was from the Southern Slavic Ornamental Origins. It's likewise Romanic or Latin derived. With the source Professor Dr. I. Kersenjavi. And the book must have been Uber den Ursprung der Sudslavischen Ornament Motiv in Croatish Review. Croat, I think it's Croatian. Pay the year 1886, page 102. Oftentimes, through the form of ornamentals, we are presented on ceramic and bronze objects, specific symbolic signs, which have at their base somewhat pre-ancient religious representations, like the circle or the solar disk, the sign of the cross, the figure of an X, triangles, and the mysterious sign yet favorable of the swastika. The symbol... The symbol of the supreme divinity of the Pelasgians, of Jupiter Tonans, representing lightning or light everywhere, life, health, and fortune, a sign which has been kept until today in the seams of the Romanian women from Transylvania. Then it also says, this last sign, the swastika, is totally unknown to Assyria, Phoenicia, Egypt. It passed this way from Europe to Asia Minor, according to Schliemann in his book, Ilios, page 526, whomever this man was. Sounds like a German name. So the swastika first appeared in Europe and then went to Minor Asia. So going back, going back to this Sanskrit origins, really? Sanskrit origins, huh? Sanskrit origins. It's not Sanskrit origins. If this passed from from Europe to Asia Minor. Pretty much where the Pelagians lived, as I've talked about so much already. Then why are why are the Hindus or whomever given credit for it? Yes, the Pelagians occupied most of Europe, 
most of Northern Africa and most of Minor Asia up to the Indus Valley in the very beginnings. But everything originated in the Carpathian Mountains. So why are the Hindus, which are in India, which is not even Minor Asia, given credit for this? This is how history is rewritten time and time again. More so, where have you heard this explanation? The symbol of the supreme divinity of the Pelagians, of Jupiter Tonans, all right? Have you ever heard Jupiter Tonans told anywhere? Anywhere? By anyone? Oh, did I pull this up? Oh, here we go. Jupiter Tonans. AudioEnglish.org. I have not found any book that mentions Jupiter Tonans. What I did find is an epithet for Jupiter. And then it also says... Jovi, Jupiter, Roman mythology, supreme god of the Romans, counterpart of Greek Zeus. Okay, I understand now that Jupiter is really another way of saying the sun. In fact, even this explanation given representing lightning or light everywhere. The sun is light everywhere. Right? Life, okay. Health and fortune, okay. A sign which has been kept until today in the seams of the Romanian woman from Transylvania. So in other words, in other words, the sun, life-giving, very positive, wants to help humanity. On the other hand, the Jupiter from, from Greek mythology and Roman mythology, wanted to destroy humanity. So this right here is more proof of the imposter assuming the role of the previous civilization deities, but instead of being positive, being negative. Jupiter Tonans is not the same as Jupiter from Roman and Greek. Mythology, and going back to this article with this guy in 1979 a Sanskrit scholar P.R. Sarkar said that the deeper meaning of the word is permanent victory he also said to like that like any symbol can have positive and negative meaning depending on how it is drawn so in Hinduism the right hand swastika illustrated below is a symbol of the god Vishnu and the sun while the left hand swastika is a symbol of Kali and magic. The double meaning of symbols is common in ancient traditions, like for example the symbol of the pentagram, five pointed star, which is viewed as negative when pointing downwards and positive when pointing upwards. So then, going back to the book, how is it drawn? How is the symbol drawn? It's drawn like this, which is the counterpart of <laughs> the negative. Will you look at that? This is this. So even though meaning is backwards today, okay. Sanskrit scholar P.R. Sarkar, all I gotta say is, fuck you, negative. You switch this shit around. Like everything else, everything else is in reverse. Now then, to continue to fully understand what is stated here. If Jupiter Tonans is the initial son of the Pelagians and the Jupiter of Greek and Roman mythology is a different Jupiter, not Tonans 
then we are talking based on this definition, which clearly says Jupiter is a sun. We're talking about different suns in the sky. There used to be a sun, then there was another sun, then there was another sun most likely. Because we also know Saturn castrated his father Uranus. I believe this Uranus figure is Jupiter Tonans. I might be wrong though, so don't don't set that in stone just yet. Um As I mentioned, the, the entire system of these ornamentations is Pallas or Pallasian. Obviously, Europe up to minor Asia. Modern science knows it as the Vinca culture. The Vinca culture, also known as Turda Vinca culture, is a Neolithic archaeological culture in south southeastern Europe dated to the period 5700 to 4500 BC. Archaeologists concluded that in the 5th and early 4th millennia BC, just before the mice in East Central Europe, all Europeans had towns with a considerable concentration of population, temples several stories high, a sacred script, spacious houses of four or five rooms, professional ceramicists, weavers, Așteaptă un pic, nu pot vorbi la moment, că fac un video. Sorry about that. So, yeah. Temples serve several stories high, a sacred script, spacious houses of four or five rooms, professional ceramicists, weavers, copper, and gold metallurgists. Exactly what Den Suishan was saying about the Pelagians, including gold. A flourishing network of trade routes existed to circulated items such as obsidian, shells, marble, copper, and salt over hundreds of kilometers. Exactly what Dan Sushala was saying, especially through the Danube. The Danube was the main path of commerce throughout Europe for a very long time. Now let me remind you, the Jetai are the ancestors of the Goths. The Goths were Jetai. The Goths which settled up to Germany, or what is considered Germanic's peoples, are really, well, as listed here, originally of somewhat Pelagian origin, but the same applies to the people of the Middle East all the way to the Indus Valley, which includes Babylon, Syria, Judea, Phoenicia, well, up to a certain point, because after a certain point, there was the invader, which is represented by the new sun, which infiltrated the bloodlines of the original Pelagians. I'll cover that in much more detail in many more videos. Also, in chapter 2, part 2, which I will make a presentation on, it talks a lot about the pottery and the tools used by these people, which, which um, matches to what is said here on this website. What's also interesting to note here is, where was it? Okay, anyways, the Vinca culture flourished from 5500 BC to 3500 BC on the territories of what is now Serbia, Romania, Bosnia, Bulgaria, and Macedonia. It got its name from the present-day village of Vinca, 10 kilometers east of Belgrade on the Danube River, where over 150 Vinca settlements had been determined. There is no evidence of war or defenses in the townships, and it appears... Oh, there it is. 
And it appears that the Vinca were a peaceful society combining low-level agriculture with foraging and trade. They produced the first known European examples of a proto-script. Proto! Just like the language of the Pelagians is known as Proto-Latin. Just like the Pelagians themselves are known as Proto-Latins. And we're the first people in the world known to smell copper. What you just said, gold above. Copper and gold metallurgists? Come on. Come on. This In two paragraphs, you're contradicting yourself. They exist in a similar state for almost 2,000 years, following which they appear to have dispersed around the Mediterranean and Aegean. Yeah, they became the Hellenics, or rather, their bloodlines populated those areas, and then the invasion mingled with their populations, and that's how new genetic bloodlines were born. I've come to conclude that what is known as Neanderthal DNA dominant is Pelagian and what is known as Homo sapien or Cro-Magnon DNA dominant is the invader. I'll leave that alone for now. So yeah, they were peaceful people. They were peaceful people. Obviously lived for 2000 years in peace according to that article. So this thing, which represents negativity, was really the positive. Now, he also mentioned that this sign was part of the clothing of the Romanian women from Transylvania. This is what traditional clothing of Romania looks like. As you can see. As you may have seen, this is actually very similar to clothing such as Berber clothing. And many others. I should probably make a video about all these different clothing styles from different civilizations all over the world. We'll see. But, um, traditional Romanian clothing. As you can see, a lot of symbolism on the dresses. Look at all these flowers, for example. A lot of flowers. So clearly, there has been an evolution in the symbolism on clothes as well. For a better idea what the symbolism means, here's Romania's secret language. A brief description of what the symbols are, which may or may not be accurate. I don't know. I have not researched this in enough detail. But you can see here the, the skine winder, which is not Romanian words, represents regeneration which is swastika, a swastika, or a type of swastika. Um, also, lower there is Romania beyond the story, beyond Dracula, blah, 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 more symbols. Here, there's another swastika. Look at that, even the cross, which it was Mithra, not Jesus. Mithra is the original Christ. Jesus is the imposter. I have accepted this as truth. Bash me all you want. This is what my research has concluded. Because Jesus comes from the Middle East after the invasion occurred. In the form of the Persians, in the form of the Jews, in the form of the Greeks later on and the Romans. But Mithra always was Mithra on Romanian lands, the original Christ, and I will stand by that until I am proven wrong, which will never occur because no one can prove this is wrong. <laughs> 
More so, there's a YouTube channel called Daniel Roxine. This is where I... This this is a, a Romanian man. Where is he? Uh, he has his own show on Romanian television. Where he has guests who speak about various topics. So this is Daniel Roxine. He represents his own website. I learned a lot about Romania from this website. Although I know that even here a lot of things are not the absolute truth. Political interests are everywhere. Everywhere. I wish I could translate this whole channel for you, but that would probably require permission and... It's too political. It's not worth my time. Anyways, one website he mentions a lot is called dachaart.ro. And over here, there's all kinds of things. But what will eventually interest me as my research becomes more complex is the books presented here. I was not supposed to click on that. Dang it. Anyways, a lot of books are written speaking about the topics that I speak about. Wait a minute, now that I did look. Just one second. Spartacus and the Gladiators, Thraco, Tracian, Jetian, and Dacian. That's one book. Another one is Dacia and its projects of remaking Dacia. Another one is Homer, the history. The Pelagian, the unknown Pelagian history. Another one. I don't care about that one. Eminescu. This was a very famous Romanian writer that seems to have been poisoned to death by the Jesuits who took all over the entire world big time in the 1800s. It's titled... The tutelary God of our spirituality. Ooh, I'm interested in that. What is with all these phone calls? Damn it. Another one is the enigmatic tablets from Sinaia. Anyways, what I want to show you here is... Is... A piece of clothing in modern day. It is titled The T shirt of the Sun Cult with Long Sleeves Women's. This is the symbolism he uses on a T shirt or as is used on a t-shirt from this website which talks a lot about not so much the Pelagians but more the Dacians well look at these symbols how many swastikas do you notice? how many different variations do you notice? how much sun symbolism do you notice? all of this is sun symbolism Four corners, the disc, the eye, the swastika. Look at that, the bottom right one. That's the universal symbol. It's, it's the Fibonacci sequence, is it? I'm not sure. It's the one that expands equally like a snail. I don't know. I'm having a moment. So yeah, there you have it. The origins of the swastika. It's not what we are told. It is not what we are told. The origins are told to us by Dan Sushan. And they simply state it was the, the symbol of the supreme divinity of the, the Pelagians of Jupiter Tonans. 
representing lightning or light everywhere, life, health, and fortune, a sign which has been kept until today in the seams of the Romanian woman from Transylvania. The swastika.